If I was looking for a new handbag in that mid-range luxury price point, these are my top 9 picks from the category. So if you're also looking for a new handbag, I've actually ordered in all of my favourites. And today I'm going to take a look at the finer details, talk about the pros and cons for each of these bags, as well as how it looks on the body and what it fits. So giving you as much detail as I possibly can, um, in a bit of a first impressions style video. If you are looking for a new bag for Black Friday, I will go through each of the styles I'm showing today and try to find the best discounts I can. I'll also put that in a blog post so you can see the discounts from different retailers. Let's start today with the APC Mini Sarah bag. It's probably my favorite small APC bag right now. I've got the Mini Geneve in my collection and I adore this bag, but I think what's good about this one is that it's got the added functionality of a top handle. Probably the thing that I like most about APC is the fact that their designs to me look very very high-end. It's very clean. We don't have excessive logos or too many design details. Everything feels like it's focused on the shape and then the quality of material used. If you have the biggest iPhone, so I've got the 12 Pro Max, any of the Pro Max iPhones, you're not going to be able to fit that much more in one of the sections. This is a bag for the bare essentials, and pretty much no more than that. Something to know if you're getting an APC smooth leather bag is that it will scratch. On my black one, I've got so many scratches and marks and it's kind of unavoidable, it will happen. On the brown bag, I feel like the leather used is slightly different to the black, but just by looking and like feeling the leather, it looks like a leather that is more durable than the ones on the mini Geneve. I'm not saying it won't mark, it will. I just don't think it will be as bad as this one which marks so so easily. Something else I really like about this bag is that the crossbody strap fits really well. I don't even have it on the shortest setting, I've got it on the third shortest and it sits well on me. So if you are petite, you're worried about the length being too long, you don't have to worry about that with this bag because it will fit really well. If you're wondering where I carry my bigger things, I say this in all of my videos, I will always have a separate tote bag if I want to bring my laptop, my lunch, a water bottle, umbrella. That's kind of my second bag. One of my favorite handbag brands right now is Wanderla. So this is the Wanderla Hortensia bag and I think the shape of it is absolutely stunning. So for reference, I've got it on the shorter setting and I think it fits pretty well when it comes to my height. With Wanderla handbags, all of them are so stunning and unique in design. They don't just stick to like your traditional styles. Everything has a very cool, unique shape. Something that I can see as being a pro for this bag is that it's pretty easy to get into. It's a lot like softer. You see how like you open the flap and it's just very soft here. Whereas with some of the APC bags, I love them, but you do have to have some force to pull it back and it's a little bit more cumbersome than how easy this one is to get into. Something I immediately thought with this bag is that, okay, it's a little bit flat. Therefore, it's really not going to fit a lot or be super practical. But to be honest, I haven't really found that to be the case. It still fits quite a lot. For all of these handbags, I usually show you what my phone will look like in the bag for reference because then you can see how much space there is around the phone to fit your other essentials. But all of these do fit my everyday essentials. Let's go to some potential cons. The strap is a little bit thinner. So I think with this size, it's no problem. If you go for one of the bigger sizes and you start to put more in there, and the bag starts to get heavier, this could dig in. But I guess the pro is that this bag is very light as well. So for this size, I wouldn't have an issue. The other thing that I can only see because I'm being very, very, very specific is with the leather. You can kind of see here that the leather texture is a little bit more wrinkled, but it might just be because they're folding it here. So with the fold comes um, that creasing on the leather texture. This is the bag from today's video that I currently have on my wish list. I don't know if I'm just going to keep this green color or if I'm going to do a brighter shade. I'm thinking brighter for this bag. I'll link to some of my favorite colors and sale options in that blog post and down below if you're also interested in a handbag like this one. Next up we've got the Coach Tabby in the size 20. Instead of going for the regular size, I decided to go down a little bit to this mini one. With this bag, you've got the brush gold hardware that looks very nice. It's a very soft brush gold. Something I've noticed in these reviews is that Coach bags are practical. Everything they design just seems um, well thought out. From back pockets, which they seem to do in all of their bags, to having the right size. Do you see how well that fits the largest iPhone? With phones, it doesn't really get that much bigger than this one. The fact that they've considered this, designed it for this bag, and that most phones will fit in, 
I think it's just really efficient. This seems so obvious, but there are so many bags today that I think will benefit from just being like a centimeter bigger. They're in that size where I don't want to go up a size, but it's just a centimeter too small where my phone kind of has to struggle in rather than slot really comfortably in. So with this bag, one of the biggest things I like is that it's got this small bag look, but it still fits everything I need it to. Onto some other details. We've got the removable top handle and we've got a removable shoulder crossbody. Shoulder crossbody with all of Coach's bags, they're too long on me. I've been told that you can go into their store and they can punch in the holes for you for free. I've never tried that, but I think it's very much needed as they do sit very, very long. This bag has a very textured pebble leather and I do really like the way it looks and feels. The leather is soft, yet because of the texture and the pebble leather, it's going to be very sturdy. What I think the Tabby line is really, really good at doing is creating a bag that suits pretty much every occasion, especially if it was like in black or in the classic color. You could wear it at night, you could wear it in the day as an everyday bag. You can dress it up, dress it down. It kind of does it all. On that note, I would also say if I had this in my collection, I don't know how often I would use it because I do have bags for very specific purposes. Like I have my going out bags. I have my more casual bags, my more elevated, structured bags. So this is kind of one of those bags that I do think will get lost in the mix. It doesn't lean into any of them particularly strongly. I recommend this if you're looking for an everyday bag that will kind of do it all. You don't want too many bags in your collection. You want one bag or two bags to basically cover everything. I think this will be a really good one in your collection. While we're on the topic of Coach, I might talk about the Coach Lana as well. The fact that this shape is combined with minimal hardware, I think keeps it quite contemporary and elevated. Sometimes I've seen bags with this shape, but it's got some like hardware bits at different places and that can make it actually feel a bit more dated. Whereas I like how clean everything is here. When a bag is more simple, I think the quality has to be there. So with this bag, there's not many things to look at. So immediately I'm drawn to the quality of leather, how neat the stitching is around the bag and on the handles. All of this I think is more important because it's where my eye goes. Can you see how neat that looks? If this was messy, I mean, it would just look very cheap. And I think it's all done very nicely. The leather material like the tabby bag is very, very textured. It's got that heavy grain to it and you don't have to worry ever, ever about scratching or really damaging this leather. This is a style of handbag because you've got these straps sticking up that I think really does look its best when it's top handle or in the crook of the arm. You can, of course, use a shoulder, crossbody, but I don't think it really looks its best worn that way. If this was a top handle bag, for me, it's no problem. You can't really get into it when I'm using it this way. If you use it as a crossbody or shoulder bag, I think it's not really designed to be used that way because it can't really even close. You do have a middle compartment and it's got a magnet, so that will keep some things more secure. If you're thinking about this bag, one thing I will consider is the size and whether it suits you. So with my bags today, I feel like this one is Kind of that size where it looks pretty big, but that's partially due to the handles. And it actually doesn't fit, I think, as much as others. So if I wanted to carry a book, it kind of has to go in this way with the top sticking out. It's one of those awkward sizes where I actually wouldn't carry that much more than this bag, but it's just so much bigger in size. I do still think this is a very lovely bag, very contemporary, very clean, very sleek, if that's the vibe you're going for. It also comes in a bigger size. If you wanted it to fit a bit more, and have it be an everyday work bag. Next one is the APC Astra. Now, this one kind of reminds me in shape to my APC Albain bag. They are different styles, but I think they function in a similar way because they are both predominantly shoulder bags. Unlike other APC bags, I feel like this one definitely has more of a statement design and buckle to the front of the bag. Other than the buckle, it's retained that same minimal clean design that I really do love APC for. So you've got that logo at the back now, but other than that, nothing. You don't even have the hardware on the sides. Um, it's just very, very, very clean. With the shoulder strap, instead of having a piece dangling um, when it's too long, it actually tucks back into this section of the bag. And it means that you don't have any dangling straps, nothing to ruin the aesthetic, 
of how clean, minimal it looks. There really is a lot of similarities between this bag and the Sarah I talked about. The color is the same and I think the leather is exactly the same too. When I feel this leather, I feel like it's very raw. When I feel this one, it almost feels a little bit more like glossy, like very, very slightly so. That makes me think it's going to be more stretch resistant than this. But it is still a smooth leather bag, so do expect to still get some scratches because I think it's hard to avoid with anything that's very smooth. So structure bags, I usually don't think it's going to fit much, but this one will fit the book you're reading or a Kindle. And then it will of course fit your phone or your daily essentials and a little bit more. When it comes to the weight of a bag, because APC uses a thick, thick leather, they're not the lightest bags. With the mini one, I think it really doesn't matter because it's so small and you can't fit much in. And then with this bag, because it's bigger, I start to care a bit more. It does weigh something. For example, if I kind of weigh it up next to some other bags of this size, it's a fraction heavier. A potential con for APC bags is that they are stiff and structured bags. So sometimes when you're trying to access the bag, you're really having to like push the flap back and you're kind of really squeezing your hand into each of the flaps. This is at the very beginning, it will soften with use but it will always be a little bit kind of harder to get into compared to really slouchy soft bags. With this bag, a potential con is that you can only wear it in one way, which for me is on the shoulder. You have the adjustment to lengthen the strap so it becomes a longer shoulder bag or a crossbody. But the truth is this bag is far too big for me to want to wear it as a crossbody. I think it will look too bulky and be too much. I've only got one bag today that is more of your high-end designer. So this is the Chloe Woody Tote. The reason why I want to include this one is because it's more of that entry-level high-end designer and I just wanted to see the difference and do a comparison. I think these two bags are probably the most comparable, so I'll kind of review this bag with this in mind. The leather feels really nice. It is a little bit thinner, I would say, overall, compared to something like this. I do really like the aesthetic of this bag. I love that you've got the Chloe embroidered into the bag. It's in the same color, and I think it's a really beautiful way to do their logo. Having held this leather one in my hand, and having seen the canvas as well, I would honestly say I prefer this bag in canvas. I think it's more fun. It captures that casual tote feel better than I think what the leather does. I'm really quite underwhelmed by this bag that I don't even know like what parts to talk about. To quickly kind of sum up, the good part is that it's light, it holds a lot, it's easy to use, it's practical. Um, the cons is that there's just nothing really special about it. No details, no closure, no compartments other than like one tiny slot here, no feet. Really not a lot of anything to justify a more high-end bag. This is a very popular bag that I've been asked to review. It's the Strathberry East West Mini Bag. The first thing I need to say about this bag is that I got the mini and I should have gotten the regular size. The reason being that this is again a very structured bag and I think that the mini is just a little bit too small for my daily essentials. So if I put my phone in, it fits but it kind of fits on that diagonal where there is a little bit of resistance. And immediately, if we compare it to this bag, because this bag is laid out and designed very well, even though it's small, it still fits everything I need to. Whereas this bag, because of the shape and design, is small but it doesn't really cut it for all of my essentials. Sometimes it's things like that that I wish a brand would consider, especially because this is a pretty popular phone these days. I think it would have been nice just to make it that little bit Bigger. When it comes to design, I think it's very, very elegant. There really aren't that many chain strap handbags in the mid luxury price point that I think look very elegant, but this is definitely one of them. The gold is a light gold, it's not too bright, uh, but it is a little bit more shiny. Same with the hardware, it's shiny, light gold. The other thing is that this I think looks very modern and very sleek. It's so simple, it's just this bar, but it's so iconically. Strathberry, and I think that looks really nice. The design of Strathberry bags feel very intentional. With this light pink color, it's using this deep purple glazing that I think looks so good with the pink. Had this been black, I think it would honestly look a little cheap, um, but the deep purple looks really, really good with this color. So let's now talk about some of the cons. First thing, strap too long. So the reason that it looks like it fits me is because I've created a bit of a knot on the inside to shorten the strap. I just taken an elastic band and basically tied the strap together so they meet in the center. The way that I've done it is not the best because it does kind of restrict a bit of access to the back pocket. Um, there are other ways to do it and I'm sure it's 
okay. With chain straps, I'm not gonna say this is a major con, it's just kind of how it is. And I always expect to have to make some adjustment to the length. I would say as you're closing the bag, this can be a bit annoying. Just the way that you have to like pull this up and slot this down. It can sometimes be a little annoying. Since I was reviewing Strapberry, there is another bag I want to share, which is their bucket bag. Like most bucket bags, it can fit a ton. And the iPhone in this case just goes in so easily and it will close with no problem. Either. So compared to some of the other Pebble levers, the Pebble is a bit bigger. The appearance is heavily textured. It still feels very soft to the touch. I like that this bucket bag has the feet. Otherwise, this could be a bit too floppy and shapeless if it didn't have that feet to kind of ground it. The thing about this buckle is that it does close fairly securely. It doesn't really loosen. It seems to hold its place very well. With a lot of the bucket bags I've had, even if you try to close it tight, you still have quite a bit of a gap and it still feels very easy to open but this is probably one of the most secure closures of a bucket bag I've seen. I would say the only reason you wouldn't like it is because you don't like style cheap bags. If you want your bucket to have a lot of structure to it, this isn't really that. It's more soft, slouchy in shape. I imagine it will continue to slouch as you wear it getting softer and softer. The other reason is that you just want something more elevated. You want something more chic, this will be a more dressy bag and it will make your outfits feel more put together. This is a casual bag that will dress down your look and make it more casual. This is the final bag I'm reviewing today. This is the Wanderla Uma bag. This is another perfect example of a Wanderla bag because it's just so unique. First thing first, let's just talk about the general aesthetic. I love this purple color. I think it's beautiful. It's a neutral because it's kind of dark and muted, but it's also just so elevated and rich and like deep. In color. Similar to the last one the bag I talked about, this bag is both structured and soft. See here, it's a lighter leather, very soft, easy to use. But we've got a bit more shape here and here. It's reinforced, so it's kind of harder, more structured here. And if you look at the inside of the bag, it's really just one simple compartment. I actually don't mind this. I think this is the reason why this bag is so light. It weighs almost nothing like a shell because it doesn't have any complicated lining or compartments. One of the potential cons for this bag is that I feel the strap is a bit thin. I love the way that looks, but if I was to feel this bag up, I can see the strap not being as comfortable as other bags. Because this one is smaller, to me it's not an issue. It doesn't weigh much. Because we're getting bigger here, it can start to add up in weight and therefore I don't really know how practical this very thin strap would be. If you like old Celine vibes, a lot of Wanderla bags remind me of this old Celine bag. I'll put up a picture on the screen. Everything about this bag just screams understated. And I think that if you like something minimal, clean, modern, any Wanderla bag just feels super stunning. This is not my absolute favorite. I like that one more. And then there's also this one, which I reviewed in a recent video. I'll put that review down below. I think I slightly prefer that one as well. This bag is not completely smooth. It's got a very subtle grain to it. I don't think you'll get many scratches on this but you still get that smooth looking appearance. All right, so finally in today's video, let me talk about what my top three and five are. My favorite bag right now is the Wanderla Hortensia bag, just because I adore the circular shape. I think it looks so nice in different outfits. This is a bag that is currently on my wish list. I think my second has to be the Mini Sarah. I love the functionality. Again, top handle, crossbody, shoulder. When the bag has this function, it will always get lots of wear from me just because it will create those different looks for different outfits. My third pick is the Coach Tabby in the size 20. I really love how cute this size is, but how well thought out the layout is. It's just designed in such a smart way. So you get that very mini bag look, but it still fits all your essentials. If I went to five, I do want to include the Strathberry bucket bag. This bag is so simple, but I love this feature of Strathberry bags. I love that this is such a functional bag, but it still just looks so cute. Um, whether you want to use a top handle or crossbody. Five is a lot, it's kind of like all of these bags, but I guess the other one would be the APC Astra. This bag looks stunning on. I think the shape makes it look very expensive, very luxe. For a work bag, for a winter dressy bag, 
This is so chic. And I know that ABC bag quality is really good. So I can always just feel confident recommending their pieces. So those are my top bags I want to share in today's video. I will have all of these bags along with sizes, color, linked down below. And I'll also have that blog post where I'll go into a bit more detail about the best sales and the colors are currently on sale for Black Friday. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lovely week. If you're looking for more bag reviews, I've done another one where I talk about black bags and brown bags. So I'll link to them down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in a few days. Bye.